at long last. Here we are with the Sony Bravia 9, as you guys can clearly see, the 65 inch variation. In this video, you are going to see the unboxing process, my personal opinions, some examples of what this TV can do out of the box, and again, just a general no BS approach to the information that you've heard from many others that are, again, paid off or put up to it by Sony to say something positive about the product. We're not doing that here. This is not a commercial. I paid for this out of my own pocket so that you could know if this is actually a good TV or not. Now, once you get the box off, you're gonna notice some serious downgrades. The biggest downgrade for the Sony so far that I've noticed is the remote. I don't know if you can see this, but this is their BS remote. I'm gonna get it open and show you. This TV costs $3,299 and this is the remote they give you. I mean, it almost looks like you have cheap plastic speckles in it. Like, what is this cheap? I mean, look at that. Look at how cheaply made that is. It looks so disgustingly cheap. Like, the cheapest grade plastic I have ever seen or held in my hand. And this is for a TV that is 3000 $299. And if you say that it doesn't matter, I conveniently over here have the Sony A95L remote. A massive difference for the exact same price point. You are already seeing in real time that you are getting so much less from Sony in 2024. It's bad enough that they've went down to mini LED from a quantum dot OLED, but now you don't even get the nice premium aluminum remote with the nice Sony logo. It's cheap plastic all around. And I mean the cheapest great plastic they could find. So already not off to a great start. Another thing that is noticeably missing is the Bravia cam. Nowhere here am I seeing any type of Bravia cam at all. It's just not here, which kind of has me like, what the heck guys? Like seriously? What the heck? Not here. Downgraded from last year. Now, something that's really positive is even if they knock this TV around in shipping, this thing is packed pretty darn well. Right down to even having brackets here to kind of stop if it gets knocked around to protect the television on top of all the styrofoam that it had to hold it in place. Definitely a nice touch and more TV manufacturers should implement this. I mean, seriously. Look at how good this thing is put together. I mean, I don't believe that this thing would have any damage anytime soon. And that, my friends, is impressive. Stand assembly on the Bravia 9 is super easy. So you basically have two positions that you can choose from. The lower that you go down, basically that will accommodate a sound bar. The higher up you select, that's gonna be more flush to the TV, giving that like, picture on a pedestal look okay and as you see here I chose the higher up so it's the picture on the pedestal type look again all you do after that is grab your screws drop them in the holes here and that's pretty much it now let's talk about the design aspect for a couple of seconds here okay it has a built-in power cable so if anything happens to it your TV's cooked bad idea don't like it a detachable power cable should be the norm especially when we're talking about one of this weight and size i don't think you guys realize just because it's 101 pounds doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be light it's 101 pounds of awkwardly dispersed weight so for everybody trying to go up to like you know 75 or so on so forth Good fucking luck because this shit was heavy and is heavy. It's a pain in the ass and I think a lot of people are going to be surprised with how awkwardly heavy this thing is, reminding me of a lot like an old tube TV or something from the 90s. Very heavy already. Not a fun experience. I think, again, it's going to sound kind of like biased, I guess, but the TCL, for example, a lot lighter and it still had great black levels. Me personally, the person I am, out the gate, I would much rather deal with TCL's weight and all that than to lug this heavy Sony around just for the sole purpose of getting quotation mark a better black levels, which again, we'll test that, but it's really irritating because that's one of those things I don't like. A heavy TV in the time where things are supposed to get more convenient and lighter, definitely not a good look. Setting up the Bravia 9 behind me has me saying literally only one thing. 
fuck this shit. This thing, this little beast of a fucking TV is heavy as hell. I'm tired of this already. I mean, it's already up, but damn. Man, this is the kind of TV you put on a damn media console and call it a day. And if you think you're wall mounting this, fuck that shit for real. Like, there is no fucking way. There is no fucking way. I would hire people to do this shit. You will throw out your damn back if you are doing it by yourself. If you don't have help, I promise you the Bravia 9 will be one of the hardest TVs you've ever wall mounted in your entire life. Again, another negative that a lot of reviewers just aren't talking about. Okay, this top section here where you see this little cutout, this is where the Bravia camera is supposed to go, but they did not include that this year, so that is a la carte, or i.e. you're going to have to buy it separately. Another, again, key difference between the A95L and the Sony Bravia 9. Again, I wouldn't want to pay $32.99 for a television and then not get the additives. I wouldn't want to have to pay anything extra, so already... For the exact same money, you're falling behind the A95L, again, making this purchase a little bit dumber by comparison. So unfortunately, Sony on the Bravia 9 does do the satisfaction of turning on the TV for you, which I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like that part. That's for me a really, really nice part. So for that to be taken from me kinda sucks a little bit, so the TV's already powered on, and now it's doing this accessibility thing, super annoying by the way, where it's just doing the cycling in different languages, telling you the accessibility and talkback features, blah, 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 how to turn it on, whatever. We're on the Google Home screen where it says, welcome. We're going to select English. It's going to say, select your country. We're in the United States, right? We're going to select that. If ever the TV will work, I'm pressing the button. Ooh, that's a lag. Not good. This has got to be one of the most irritating things I have run into on a television, okay? So after you input your Wi-Fi information, then Sony prompts you to go and sign into a Google account. There's no option to do it later or to just say next, because I say next, and it turns red, meaning you can't even use this TV if you're online without logging into a Google account. What if I just want to use the TV, update it, but I don't want to sign into Google? You can't. This is the kind of stuff that I've been trying to point out year after year when I'm like, look, forced terms of service lead to other things. Now you're forced to have a Google account on a Sony TV. It's stupid. I don't like this. Now, no other reviewer will be this angry about it. A lot of people will feel like maybe this is biased to which again, I will tell you I bought this with my own money. I wasn't put up to this by Sony. I'm not a part of the Value Electronics Diamond Retailer, you know, band of influencers. I am me, okay? And as an individual, I am giving this product a truly honest to God fair chance to succeed. But then let's just pause and look at what I've noticed so far. I'm getting a downgrade in my remote. I'm not getting the Bravia cam inside the box. The thing is heavy as hell. It's impossible to wall mount because it's heavy as hell. And then if that's not bad enough, when I turn on the TV, oh, by the way, I couldn't even turn on the TV. The TV turns itself on, robbing me of that experience after I do all this fucking hard work. And now I'm met with this screen that's forcing me. I don't even have a choice in the matter, forcing me to sign into my personal Google account if I want to use this TV and I want to do whatever because they don't give you respect. And I, I really have a problem with disrespect, okay? Especially when I've paid you $32.99 plus tax and you don't even respect me enough like TCL did where you could just skip the shit. You can sign in and you don't have to do the logging into your personal account thing. Let that sink in. It's, it's a Sony decision at this point because TCL is also using the Google platform. And the reason I'm mentioning TCL, not because I'm put up to this by TCL or anyone else, it's because they are a, comp, a direct competitor, okay? Mini LED to mini LED. And it both, they both have Google as the operating system. But this right here pisses me off because it's totalitarian, it's authoritarian, it's stupid. I, I'm sorry to rant, but this kind of shit really bugs me because no one in these damn reviews will mention this shit. They will tell you how amazing it is, and they won't tell you that you're forced to do certain things that you don't want to do. So, yeah, that really bugs me. I don't like it, but let's continue on. I cannot stress how annoying this TV is. After you're forced to sign into your personal account, they will then show on like every slide after that your personal email address, which if you're a YouTuber, you either have to blur out the text on screen or just not show it like I'm doing here. Really irritating that that's how this fucking TV works, that like once they have your email, they're just going to start spam fucking it on the screen. Like, 
what if it's something sensitive where I just wanted to put it in once and I don't really want everybody in the room to see my email. It's a breach of security privacy in my personal view because again, just because I'm putting in my email address because I have to for the TV, what if somebody walks in that you don't want to see that information? They don't think about that kind of stuff. I think in their heads, they're just trying to make it seamless and easy, but it's not. And I don't like stuff like that. Now, here we are again with the bullshit Google crap. Allow to search across apps. Yeah, sure, we can search across apps. You put me through all this shit, might as fucking well, right? I can't stress how annoyed I am already. And that's not a good thing considering I just unboxed it with an open mind, to which some people might not believe me, and I don't give a fuck what people think, right? But this process has been so painstakingly annoying that like, honestly, I'm just like disenchanted. Now this might not bother most people, but for me, again, I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like being strong-armed or forced into taking a direction I normally would not have taken if not influenced or strong-armed into that direction. Now, they tell you to start your Bravia experience, yada, yada, and then you just do all this crap here. Oh, this is just, it's just so annoying. And you have to agree to proceed. That's just the name of the game with a Sony TV. And this is kind of like my problem with Sony TVs, right? There's no user freedom. You have to agree to all or agree and proceed. And it's just like, dude, like you guys suck. Like, I don't want to share my data. I don't want to agree to any of this crap. I, I don't. And it's just all you can do is just agree to proceed. And I don't want to do that. I just don't. You see, like, I didn't agree to the data sharing part where it says sharing TV data, including app data. Again, if you don't know about app data, it has personalized information. I didn't want to agree to that. And then it literally held me on that page, making me think that I couldn't go forward. But if you notice, you can go forward past that point. It's just they're giving you a hard time for whatever reason. Because again, I don't agree to that. I say agree and proceed. It's irritating. I, I can't stress it. Like, I'm really annoyed, if you can tell, right? Because it's basically like them strong arming you. And I, I can't stress how much I don't appreciate that. Now, I'm going to turn off power saving and try to redeem the rest of this unboxing. But so far, man, I'm just, I shouldn't be this irritated, right? It should just be convenient and fun. And you should enjoy setting up your purchase, but you can't. And I think that's one of those things that really just bugged the everlasting crap out of me, but maybe that's just a me thing. So I'm going through all these other little prompts. Um, it is it is tabletopped. If you've wall-mounted your Bravia 9, by the way, let me know in the comments down below how fun that was, because I'll tell you right now, just tabletopping this was a bitch. I could not imagine lifting and hoisting this heavy fucker up and putting it on the wall. Like, no fucking way. There's no way. I don't want to lift 101 pounds of awkward weight where you can't even touch the entire screen because you'll fuck up your TV and then hanging out on the wall. Like, no, like literally no, like no way. But again, I will digress from that point and move forward. Now let's go ahead and set up the optimize for your sound and I'll just do it, you know, only this one time because I don't need them always listening to my shit because, you know, fuck Google, you know, like, I mean, really. <sighs> Man, what an annoying process. I truly hope this ends up being a good review process because, I mean, really, man, like, this is so irritating. Okay, let's go. Let's go. No, the night, an error has occurred. What are you talking about? Oh my God, bro. Like, I am, what is it about this? An error has occurred. Measurements canceled. Please try again, bro. What the fuck? Literally, what the fuck? Go back and do it again. Ugh. Right? And, and notice how it says nothing about you need to be quiet or anything like that. So if it's because I was talking during the review, that's fucked up. Because it's not even saying anything like that. Oh. This is stupid. Ugh. I'm so over this. Oh, amazing. Amazing. It was finally complete. Lucky me, right? <sighs> okay. 
adjust, uh, I don't care about how to adjust the tweeter beam. I really don't. Do I'm not going to register using my Google account. Fuck off. I don't care. I'll register later. Fuck off. Enhance your TV's coverage with Sony's protection plan and extended warranty. I mean, Jesus. It's like now they found ways to push even more shit to you on your TV. As if we needed that. Honestly, man. This better be like the best fucking mini LED TV I've ever seen. Because honestly, dude. Already, I'm like, I'm showing up annoyed after opening the damn box. Uh, I don't care about Bravia Connect. If you do, you can go ahead and do this step. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to set up for retail so I can access the store demo. And I'm going to say, yes, use the retail. And yes, start the demo now and finish the setup. Uh, and then allow it to play the demo, I imagine. It says demo on. I mean, do I just hit done and just say fuck it or what? Uh, completing your Google setup. There is blooming. I am seeing noticeable blooming on the screen right now. I'm going to have to wait till it's a totally dark room. But yeah, guys, there's definitely blooming on that. Because that was not 100% clear at all. Okay, start exploring. Okay, now I can start exploring. Oh, what's that? Nothing loaded? Oh, I'm about to say, y'all about to piss me off with that, because I'm like, oh, hell no. We just did all that shit for what? And now they're like, oh, for you. It's like, I don't, I don't need... Oh, my gosh. This TV, guys, this one right here is annoying. Not gonna lie. I mean, I'm really not gonna lie. And... Let's just see if I can figure this out. I mean, top picks for you. I mean, as you guys can see, I'm a big anime fan. I mean, but see, this is the thing that annoys me, right? They do all this, like, top picks for you thing, and they're customizing your homepage and all that. Yeah, whatever. Okay, cool, fine. But the problem with, like, for me is, like, I don't really need my preferences showcased all over the main home screen. Like, I, I just, I'm not like that. Some people might really want that, but that's annoying for me. Like, I know what I like. I don't need you to go throw it in my face like I'm some dumb dumb that doesn't know how to go and find what he wants. Yes, I guess this makes it convenient for lazy people if you want to see certain things, but it's just annoying for me personally. So I'm going to try to get the demo on the screen and figure out, like, what the fuck if I can. I feel like all I should have to do is go into this demo app, and that should do the trick. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to figure out what to do from there. Um, and let's just say start the, the content, right? All right. That worked. Perfect. Brilliant. Yes. Worked. Great. Okay. Now we can get an idea of what the picture quality looks like. Okay. So far, as I look at it, it's bright. I'm not really noticing sharpness and spades. I'm just not, especially on that ice cube. That was kind of blurry. Maybe once they get to the geometric patterns, nope, it still looks kind of like meh. I, again, I'm not seeing like extreme sharpness. I'm not saying the TV doesn't have it, but in this example, I'm just not seeing that. Now, I am sitting closer to the TV, so maybe that will have something to do with it. Um, but so far, I'm not really seeing like crazy, like next level contrast or anything like that. It just looks like what I've seen, honestly, from Sony before. On TVs like, you know, their A95L and other models. So, I mean, it's not reinventing the wheel. And honestly, the A95L was, like, way more impressive, if I'm being honest, than this has been so far. Now, again, they have good brightness. But there is a ton more blooming than what I would have expected for this price point. At least in the early going... Don't know. I'll I'll do a dark room test. We're going to... Hey, listen. We are going to be so fair to this TV, okay? I might be annoyed now, but we're going to put this through its paces. We're going to see if we see blooming in the dark room environments. We're going to see what we can see and how we can see it because I think you deserve that much to know what this TV is doing. So in my next examples, I'll probably show you some gaming or something like that to see real world examples of what it looks like out of the box and things like that. 
and just go through the paces of an honest real world review for everybody using it, not on demo content, not on test patterns or anything like that, but with real stuff. If you wanna see that and you want an honest, unbiased, not brought to you by Sony commercial type deal, well, you're in the right place. Subscribe, join the journey. And as always, if you end up with this TV, make sure you join the membership for $4.99 because I will, and that's $4.99 by the way, I will be making settings for this TV for those who do end up paying the Sony tax and want this TV. Again, I have not done any real work to this thing. As you know, we whipped it out of the box. So far, my first impressions aren't really positive, but they're not entirely negative either. I'm in the middle. I'm irritated right now because of the process, but at the same time, I do see that it has potential, and I think we can get it to a place where maybe it looks a little bit better than it's looking right now, where everything looks a little bit blurry for whatever reason. I don't know. I will figure it out, do what I have to, but at the least, I want it to be very transparent and honest with you about the unboxing process. It's a pain. And I don't know Solo Live that would probably see that unboxing process and say this was fun because it's heavy, it's got a lot of stuff missing like the Bravia camera, the nice premium remote, like the, you guys saw the fucking glitch happen with the fucking, it's just with the uh, acoustic speakers. It's got a lot going for it, but it also has things like that that if you do run into this situation, you'll end up maybe if you're short tempered like me, just get fucking irritated and like, dude, I don't want to fiddle with this shit. I don't want to have to sign into my fucking Google account just because I fucking signed in online to do an update or whatever so that this TV's up to date for the review. It's irritating. Like, I, it should just be fucking plug and play. It's a damn TV. And they focus too much on the Google part of it to the point where it just ruins the experience. And I don't know that Sony realizes that. And if they do, then they just don't care because TCL, again, has Google and they don't do it like that. So it is a bit irritating to see a premium brand, the so-called top of the top of the top with mini LED, not doing it right by the customer. And again, for me, that's why I'm irritated right now. Again, hopefully they show me something to redeem their standing with me right now, personally, as the reviewer. Now, again, you as the consumer or as another reviewer watching this, doesn't matter. I'm gonna give you an honest review from the perspective of myself. And again, I hope it helps. I hope it provides transparency and hopefully you learn something that maybe other people just did not tell you. Because I can tell you, I am genuinely frustrated. That is my first impression with the Bravia 9. Like all around, I'm just frustrated. So hopefully I can chill out a bit, come back at this and then make another video and we can maybe be a little bit more positive about this because this did not go good for Sony so far. But that being said, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty again. We're gonna cover more topics in the next video. Leave your suggestions and recommendations while I have this TV, because again, that's how I make all the content based off of what you wanna see. So make sure if there's something you wanna see, let me know and I'll do what I can to help you guys out. Till the next video, I'll see you guys later.